Hello, Jack. Hi, Mrs. Fletcher. Sheriff, uh, what can I do for you? You can tell us what you were doing at Matthew O'Neill's house this morning. Why? He's dead, Jack. Probably murdered. And his neighbor says she overheard you and Matthew having an argument. Emily Wiseboro? That figures. She's never been one to mind her own business. But yeah, I was there. Uh, Matthew wanted me to do some last-minute landscaping before the garden contest got rolling. And? And Matthew didn't like the stones I used to edge his hydrangea beds. And he's the one who picked them out. He said he wasn't going to pay for the work I'd done. Emily said the argument became rather personal. Yeah, I guess it did. Matthew had a way of getting under people's skin. Look, I admit I yelled at the guy, but I didn't kill him. Did he have any enemies? Well, Emily, for one. Her cats were always coming over and using his gardens as a litter box. Matthew hated that. Uh-huh. Anyone else? Just Avery Donaldson, Matthew's arch-rival. Those two go head-to-head -head for first place in the garden competition. And every year for the past five years, Avery wins. If Avery always beat Matthew, that doesn't give him much of a motive to kill him. Losers have been known to kill winners, but seldom the other way around.
I'm interested in hearing what Avery has to say about all this. Let's go find out. Hello, Jessica, Sheriff Metzger. I presume you're here because of Matthew O'Neill's death. Word travels fast. Well, let me save you some trouble. It's true that Matthew and I were rivals in everything from Halloween decorations to Christmas lights, but it was always a friendly rivalry. I wished him no ill. A friendly rivalry, in spite of Matthew's temper? Well, he was always pretty easy to get riled up. Don't take this the wrong way, Mr. Donaldson, but where were you around 11.30 this morning? That's easy. I was at Maine Coast Garden Supply, buying some mulch. Your garden is lovely, Avery. I've never seen anyone have so much success at growing tropical plants as far north as New England. The secret is my greenhouse. It allows the more tender plants to get a head start. You mind if we take a look around? Be my guest. Time to call it a day. Tomorrow morning I'd like to stop by the Garden Club office. Maybe Thomas Pickering can shed some light on things. Hello, Thomas. Are we interrupting you? Not at all, Jessica. Sheriff, come on in. Mr. Pickering, I was hoping you might remember what time you visited Mr. O'Neill at the Judge's Garden. Based on the time displayed on Matthew's broken watch, it's possible that you were the last person to see him alive. I think it was around 11 or so yesterday morning. I can't quite remember the exact time. But I can assure you that Matthew was very much alive when I left. Did you know about the rivalry between Mr. O'Neill and Avery Donaldson? Well, of course, everyone in the Garden Club knew about that. But I don't think Matthew ever got upset over it. What did he get upset over? I think Matthew was more irritated with Emily Wiseborough, because she let her cats run rampant across his garden. That and the fact that the woman has a streak of paranoia a mile wide. She accused Matthew of spreading lies about her on more than one occasion. What sort of lies? Once she complained that Matthew told the other garden club members that she liked to garden in her bathrobe. Another time, she accused him of starting a rumor about her stealing plant cuttings. Things like...
So according to Thomas, Avery and Matthew were never bitter enemies. But I still think we should follow up on Avery's alibi. Yeah, who knows? He could have altered that credit card receipt any number of ways to make it look like he was at the garden center at the time the murder took place. Good morning, Carol. How are you? Better now. Finding Matthew dead like that yesterday was quite a shock. Of course. Sheriff Metzger and I spoke with Avery Donaldson yesterday. He said that at the time Matthew was killed, he was here shopping. You wouldn't happen to have the original copy of his credit card receipt, would you? I think so. It's somewhere around here. You're welcome to look for it. This place gets to be such a mess, and I never seem to have the time to organize it.
Has Seth made any progress in determining how Matthew died? I'll ask him in a minute. He and I are going to have another look around Matthew's garden to see if we can find anything that might help. The time of Matthew's death does match the time on his broken watch, 11.30 yesterday morning, and I've determined that he was poisoned. That makes sense. The blue tinge on his lips and fingernails indicated it. What I don't know is what kind of poison killed him. Could have been a lot of things. Well, I'm hoping that we'll find some new clues to narrow the list of possibilities.
Judging by what Thomas Pickering said earlier, Emily didn't tell us the whole story about how she and Matthew got along. Mort and I should probably speak with her further.